Mamba out. Saucy, yeah, bitch, I do this often. My bitch is bad, she always in the office. So I got a tags on running my body. Can't see the pads, I'm moving new fads. With 20, my dash, I'm open, I lost him. He wanna brag, I undid his bag and took what he had. I don't care what it cost him. Then he broke, he turned to a hoe. As soon as before, the shit is exhausting. Ran out of hope, I wanna be known. The stage of my soul, it ran in muscle. I'm even broke. I'm Sports now, Darius Nate. And today we are talking about the Charlotte Hornets. And my, what a great team they are. I've already talked about my man, Gordon Hayward, who I still believe was worth some of that money. We're going to talk about the third overall pick, LaMelo Ball. We're going to talk about Terry Rozier, Scary Terry, man. We're going to talk about Malik Monk. And we're going to talk about Devontae Graham. You don't want to miss it. Darius, what are your thoughts on the Hornets this year? Oh, well, Aiden, I'm looking at the Charlotte Hornets here. And the weak Eastern Conference at, at the time we were recording. They are the 18th in the Eastern Conference, 16 and 18, 5 and 5 in the last 10 games. The best game of the season uh, came a couple of days ago where they defeated and came back against the Sacramento Kings and won by one. Uh, thanks to the Sacramento Kings pretty much just chucking Luke Walden should be getting fired. But that's another time for another time. Now look at the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, Aiden, when we did the NBA preview, about uh the Charlotte Hornets. I have to apologize to Melga Ball. Because uh, yeah, at the yeah. time I did call him oh, like how you did me with Kevin Durant. Yes you do, Darius. Go on. But there's a different that that's a different subject you're talking about. Uh, and, uh, yeah man. I apologize Lamel for calling you a bus. Uh even though you're sixteen and eighteen, the team's sixteen and eighteen and pretty much the weakest conference in in a couple of years. Apologize to him. Devontae Graham Phenomenal, you know, and he's one of my favorite players. Look at PJ Washington, uh, phenomenal player. He could improve in some places, but you look at the Charlotte Hornets here. You're going to get to the All Star break, and these next couple of games for them is really pivotal if you want to make a, I guess you call it a playoff push. And look at these next couple of games. I believe their last game before the All Star break is against the Minnesota Timberwolves, pretty much the worst team in the NBA. So that should be an easy win. They get them coming off the All-Star break. They have a couple of lackluster teams in the Pistons, and then you face the Raptors, Kings, Nuggets, Lakers, Clippers, Spurs, Rockets, Heat, Suns, and then you face Washington Wizards um, to end the month of March. Now, if you really look into the depth of the Charlotte Hornets, there, you really don't see any better type of players outside of Gordon Hayward and Bismack Beyond, and excuse me, outside of Gordon Hayward, Bismack Beyondo, and possibly Cody Zeller. This is a relatively young team, and ever since we did that Gordon Hayward episode with Aiden, I really haven't heard Gordon Hayward in the NBA news a little lately. This team has been uh, surrounded by these young, talented players. We're talking about Terry Rozier, we're talking about Gamelo Ball, we're talking about PJ Washington. Um, and Devontae Graham and company. Those are the faces of this franchise. And you look at the 16-18 team. As of now, even though at the time we were recording that the Charlotte Hornets are a playoff team, I do not believe that the Charlotte Hornets going to the playoffs are going to be pretty much a playoff team. I think they're, when the playoffs are, I think they're going to be sitting on the couch. And... No disrespect, to, no disrespect to them, but I do not think they are ready yet based on the youth. And you look at some of these other lower tier teams in the Eastern Conference at the time of recording, Aiden. You saw the Pacers were only pretty much a half game behind you. And if you lose this next game, you could move pretty much all the way down to the 10th or 11th seed. And Aiden, we've talked about this uh, time and time again about these lower tier teams in each conference. You have to win. You have to win these games if you want to stay in playoff contention. You look at your Hawks, Aiden. They lost 20 games. If they want to save the games, they like four straight games, they could be fourth place in the East, just like the New York Knicks at the time, Aiden. You look at the Washington Wizards. They were on a streak. They lost a couple of days ago, and they're going to streak again. They could find their way at the 7th seed, and they were at the 15th seed. They were going to be one of the worst teams in the league. 
to start off the season. So the Charlotte Hornets have to win. And being a young, a relatively young team, even though the chemistry is there, once you go on that tough stretch to end off the month of March, you're going up against the Lakers and the Clippers. If you lose and other playoff teams as well, if you lose, let's say three, four consecutive games, you may not that may ruin your playoff chances completely. And I know all the talent they have. I believe the next three, four or five years, the Charlotte Hornets are gonna be a playoff team, they're going to be one of the best teams in the league based on how some of these stars now are going to move on and, re- and go into the retirement stage. But the Charlotte Hornets are going to be ready in a couple of years, but I simply don't believe in the Charlotte Hornets now, but I believe in them later. That's all I have to say. Charlotte Hornets, a lot of youth, but they're not ready now. Three, four, five years, they'll be set. Like Darius said, yes, I obviously agree with them this team is the team of the future in the eastern Conference. are the upcoming and about to be what's going on in a little while i, I honestly god there's you as well probably never thought that michael jordan the gm could construct a winning team a team with players who did their jobs, all those draft night blunders. So we Malik Malik Monk, although at this point he was thought, although at this point he was he is thought to be on the more upside, how he handled Kemba Walker, their best player in franchise history. Um it was treated sort of like that this was a joke of a franchise, which they were for a while now. But I think that the viewing of the Charlotte Hornets specifically changed when they drafted LaMelo Ball. And I truly believe that even though we knew that they had good players such as Terry Rozier and Devontae Graham, we didn't really think too highly of P.J. Washington and Moon Monk going into the season, we knew that they had some pieces and we knew that this team could be okay. Not great, not good. They could be kind of like the Magic were last year. Like you like you said, Darius, the Magic are – are uh, Markel Fultz are Markel Fultz away from being from being a playoff team? And even though I have my own opinions on Markel Fultz, I couldn't fault you for that. Like I say, like I'm saying for this team, this team is maybe either a piece or a year or some more experience away from being a true contender, a team that can go past the first round and maybe even get to the second round. It just takes some time, and like you said, it takes some experience. LaMelo Ball is, I don't like to say I told you so a lot on this channel, although Darius enjoys that, but he is the one guy I'm going to say I knew what he was going to be. I knew that Puma paid $100 million for a star. I knew that the Charlotte Hornets invested in an amazing player. It was a slow start. He didn't he, he didn't really score his first couple of games. He was a menace in the paint. He got a lot of rebounds, and slowly but surely he worked his way into the starting lineup. He has now had a stretch of 20 and 30-point games that has been deemed at this point in his very young career the greatest, the greatest stretch of a rookie this season. Anthony Edwards hasn't yet broken out on that team of in Minnesota when we thought he was going to be a part of a big three with D'Angelo Russell and Cat. Cat had some COVID, had some very, very unfortunate COVID problems that unfortunately hampered that team. And we look at some of the other rookies around the league. And we look at Andrew Wiggins, who hasn't done exactly what, I, what we thought he was going to be. He hasn't been a paint presence, right? We look at Onyeka Kongu on my Hawks. He hasn't done what he needed to do. We look at Isaac Kuro. For the Cleveland for the Cleveland Cavaliers, who was start to get something on, going, I still believe Colin Sexton can be an All Star in the, this league. This is one young team that we're seeing come together and actually succeed. All the other younger teams are struggling; they're not exactly fine for one thing or another. So the question being, do I believe in this Hornets team? Yes. Do I think they're contenders? Not for a year or so. Now, Aiden, I'm looking at the Charlotte Hornets. Gordon Hayward leads him a points at around 21 and a half points per game. PJ Washington leads him in rebounds and Lamelo Ball leads him in, in assists and steals. And PJ Washington, as I mentioned earlier, leads him in, I believe, rebounds and blocks. Uh, 
Aiden, I look at the Charlotte Hornets team. They're pretty much uh, constructed as pretty much a seven-man roster. I think that's pretty unusual uh, for a pretty much an NBA team because I really don't count Cody Zell and Bismack Biyombo as big contributors to the Charlotte Hornets team. They're pretty much seven main guys. Hayward, Rozier, Ball, Graham. Don't forget about Malik Monk, P.J. Washington, and Miles Bridges. I think those are the seven main guys that the Charlotte Hornets are constructing their roster around. And Aiden, we both agree on this. The Charlotte Hornets will be successful. Not this year. I really don't think so. If if they do make the playoffs, which I believe is possible, but I really don't think so. I think they would pretty much, obviously, based on how the first half of the season has gone, seventh or eighth seed. And Aiden, you th you mentioned the Orlando Magic. The Orlando Magic had an All Star in Nikola Vucevic. That All Star in Nikola Vucevic. They have full set Evan Fournier, that Aaron Gordon, who is healthy. In the bench, they really didn't have the depth to make a deep playoff run. You look at you, and you look at the Hornets here, seven man roster, pretty unusual. You add Cody Zeller and Biombo. Pretty much two big men to just add to the roster. This upcoming offseason for the NBA, I do think Charlotte would be one of the top teams where some, I wouldn't say top premier free agents, but great depth additional players could go to Charlotte because of the youth. You look at how Rajon Rondo went to Aiden Hawks because he wanted to mentor a a star and a future premier player on, in this league and and Trey Young even though the Char even though excuse me even though the Atlanta Hawks have not lived up to expectations this season veterans went to the Hawks because they saw the talent they had and I think that would be the same scenario for a team like the Hornets with Michael Jordan in their front office and the last time I believe the Charlotte Hornets did make the did make the NBA playoffs, I believe it was 2016, and Kimba Walker was the main guy. And they lost to the Miami Heat in the playoffs that year. You look at this team here, LaMelo Ball, uh, I admit, he's going to be a star in this league. P.J. Washington, Miles Bridges, Terry Rozier, Gordon Hayward are a great supporting cast, but I have to admit that LaMelo Ball is going to be the star of the Charlotte Hornets. If he already isn't, he's going to be the star of the Charlotte Hornets for many, many years to come. The Charlotte Hornets will be a playoff team in the next two, three, four, five seasons. But this season, I really don't think so. Uh, the Charlotte Hornets, uh, you have a bright star, LaBella. And congratulations to you all. Thank you for joining us here on Sports Time. There's eight. I'm Dear Sums, and that's Aiden Musson. Until then, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Uh, peace and love, everybody. Have have a great day. Stay safe. Watch your distance and peace. See you later. Peace and love.